enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everybody. I hope you're uh, enjoying Hive Fest. Um, thanks to Roland for setting this all up. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm here to uh, talk about Leo Finance. Uh, you know, what we're doing, what we've done uh, in the past. Uh, so, you know, I think I think we've achieved a lot in 2020, um, but I think a lot is uh, yet to come in 2021. Um, so if you're familiar with Leo Finance, you know, we push out, uh, like Roland was saying, updates, you know, pretty much two to four times a week uh, from our main Hive account at, uh, at Leo Finance. Um, so what is Leo Finance? So, um, you know, in this presentation, I'll kind of just, you know, fly through these slides and, and see if we can get to Q&A, because uh, I think that's a unique opportunity here at HiveFest. Um, so Leo Finance is a social media platform. Uh, you know, our, our general idea is that uh, we want to make it social media uh, that is as easy to use as Web2, but, you know, meeting with Web3, uh, you know, what Hive offers is incredible. And uh, it's up to us to make an application that can, you know, truly leverage it and uh, create something that's great and that's usable by uh, a wide set of users, but also, you know, still bringing those principles of Web3. Uh, so tokenized attention, you know, drives a lot of the value in this type of economy. Um, so the basic premise is that we earn ad revenue uh, when people go to the site and then we take that ad revenue, we burn Leo. Um, and that basically, you know, creates some price stability. It uh, really just leverages value for every piece of content that's on the site. Uh, and that's definitely important. So I don't expect you to read this. I'm definitely not going to sit here and, and read this all off to you. But uh, these are some of our accomplishments, you know, the highlight reel of 2020, uh, what we released, um, and basically, you know, generally what we uh, what we accomplished. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, so so our, our general idea is over communicate, over promise and over deliver. Um, I think if you see what we did in 2020, uh, you can you can kind of see, you know, that that we're following that general idea. So uh, I'll let you kind of jump into the historical post Leo Finance if you want to uh, see the details of this. Uh, so why Hive? Obviously, we're at Hive Fest. This is uh, an important subject. Um, Hive is, is the best blockchain in the world for this type of application. Uh, and this is because of three second fee-less transactions. I don't think I need to uh, tell any of you about that. You know, you already know that curation rewards, author rewards, all of that stuff, you know, sending transactions. This is a unique uh, place where you can do all this stuff uh, for low fees, as in zero fees, uh, which is very different uh, compared to other blockchains uh, that really doesn't exist on most uh, applications out there in the blockchain space. So Hive is truly unique in this way. So why Hive? I think it's pretty obvious to all of us. So the all-time daily Leo price, just kind of threw this in there for fun. We've been developing this project for a long time, um, but really in the past, you know, since May of 2020, uh, is when things started to really take off. I think a lot of you have heard of Leo Finance just in the past several months. Uh, so it was definitely not something that, you know, was in the attention of everybody on Hive right away. It took a long time, took a lot of developments. Uh, and in May, we started developing our own UI, which is kind of where uh, we reached that jumping off point. And then eventually with Wrapped Leo, which I'll get into. So we expanded into DeFi this year uh, with the Wrapped Leo token uh, and the Wrapped Leo protocols uh, designed by FBSLO. Um, and this really allows us to tap into the Ethereum market uh, while staying on Hive. So we're basically bridging uh, from Hive to Ethereum. So, you know, this is a little graphic just saying users can earn Leo um, and then they can wrap it to uh, wrap Leo. Then they can use it on Ethereum for automated market makers uh, like Uniswap. Uh, and they can eventually use it for other devs that we're working on, which are Ethereum based. So it creates basically a cross chain uh, token bridge that we can leverage. So, you know, this expansion in DeFi uh, has definitely yielded some great results. I think, uh, you know, it was definitely unexpected by me that we'd have such great results. 
I think the community is pretty surprised by what we've done. Um, you know, this is a screenshot of our pool on Uniswap, uh, over half a million dollars in there, which basically gives us a depth of liquidity that allows uh, new users to invest uh, in the token so they can unwrap it and stake it on the platform. Uh, and then on the, on the uh, right side here, you can see the staked liquid and liquidity pool tokens, uh, a real-time view of it. Um, and basically, you can just see that there's a nice breakdown of tokens, and most of them are staked, uh, showing the health of our economy. So there's this idea in DeFi called liquidity black hole theory. And basically what this means is uh, in order to drive value to a pool, in order to get depth of liquidity, you have to create some incentive to get the initial liquidity. Uh, without liquidity, you can't have traders. And without traders, uh, you won't have liquidity uh, because that's how LPs are incentivized. So to create value for a tokenized ecosystem, uh, we decided to create something called a geyser. And in DeFi, this geyser model has become a lot more popular. Uh, basically, what it means is that LPs in the pool are rewarded with the token uh, based on how much LP they have, so how much in the LP uh, they're holding, and then also how long they're in the liquidity pool. So it incentivizes the best type of liquidity, which is long-term uh, liquidity that doesn't leave the pool. So uh, it basically incentivizes a stable token uh, and a healthy price. You can see. Uh, some of the you know details of this uh, in this exported uh, you know spreadsheet that just kind of shows it off, um, and you can see this interesting thing that we created called HiveLink, and HiveLink makes this geyser model the most unique uh, in the DeFi space because it takes something that lives on Ethereum and it allows it to be distributed on Hive, and I think that's uh, truly unique compared to what else is out there um, in terms of DeFi. Um, so the DeFi expansion continues. Uh, you can see that Wrapped Leo allows us to do a lot of interesting things. Uh, recently, we listed on CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, and TradingView. Uh, this type of stuff isn't possible for a Hive-based token uh, in their current forms. So having a Wrapped uh, token, uh, which basically just means that we have an ERC20 token on Ethereum, really allows us to tap into these different applications uh, and really just get Wrapped Leo out there and into the space. So if you head over to these sites like CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap, uh, you can see that they actually link back to leofinance.io and drive uh, a lot of our traffic over the past few months. So uh, our site traffic has been increasing exponentially. And a lot of this is due to Wrapped Leo and being listed on places like CoinGecko, uh, CoinMarketCap, and others. Um, so this really, you know, this is kind of the core of, of being in DeFi is to go where the users are. So moving on from DeFi, uh, we, we did something called Leo Infra, and this is you know, definitely one of my proudest projects. I'm, gra I'm uh, really grateful that we were able to do it. Um, and I think you know, we, we solved one of the problems that I've always wanted to solve on this blockchain uh, and when, within this ecosystem, which is making it easy to get started. And you know, we have these dialogues that say get started, and it shouldn't be you know, difficult. Like you shouldn't have to sign in sign up and download these five different keys and figure out how they all work, figure out how to plug into the site and all of that stuff. Um, you know, it should just be click a couple buttons and get in. So going back to that first slide um, about how, uh, you know, we're trying to make a web two platform in terms of usability, but a web three platform in terms of the back end. So on the front end, you know, users can sign up with something like Twitter and it's as easy as using any other site. Um, but then on the back end, they're getting a Hive account and they don't even need to realize that they're getting a Hive account. Uh, it's just there and their actions are going on the blockchain. So uh, here's kind of a little demo of Leo Infra and how it works. Uh, you can see there's three options now where you can sign up. So you can do a create a Hive account, uh, would basically give you a full Hive account. So this will prompt you to download your keys right off the bat um, and save them. And this is basically the process that we're all used to already. Uh, where you, you take control of the account on your own. You are the custodian for the keys. Um, and you can verify with a phone number, so SMS or Twitter. And of course, you know, Leo Finance and Leo Infra, we don't store any of that data. Um, so basically that's just to verify and prevent spam. Um, and then we created Light Accounts, which uh, I'm really proud of. I think a lot of people have talked about it for a long time. 
uh, but it took a while to actually develop something uh, along these lines. And uh, I'm really proud of how it turned out. So, you know, within 20 seconds, a user can click sign up with MetaMask, sign up with Twitter, uh, and they'll have an account. I mean, it's it's literally that easy. 20 seconds. I think a lot of you have already seen that, um, and it's you know it's super simple, and it it resembles Web 2, but on the back on the back end, they're getting Web 3. So, uh, you know, just kind of continuing on that, you know, once an account is created, uh, this user can log in with uh, Hive Signer, Keychain, MetaMask, or Twitter. Um, so super simple, super easy again. Uh, so our idea is, you know, why teach people about keys out of the gate? Uh, let's flatten the learning curve. Let's connect and collaborate with other projects in crypto and beyond. Uh, and, you know, this is really what Hive is to be uh, in my eyes. This is, you know, ease of use and the end user really doesn't even need to know about Hive. Like, uh, you know, they, it's similar to the internet. Most people don't understand the internet on the back end. They understand that there is something called the internet and it's running everything, uh, but they don't know the nuances of it. They don't need to know, you know, how to run their own versions, you know, all of this stuff, hold their own keys, all of that. Uh, all of the nuances that make Hive hard to use, we're trying to streamline and make, you know, irrelevant basically to the, to the end user, uh, at least to most end users. Uh, so that's why we have options where they can take control of the keys, you know, if they're the kind of user that wants that kind of uh, control. So how has Leo Infra been doing so far? Uh, here's some of the data. Uh, basically, Leo Infra launched about 60 days ago. Um, and initially, it was just MetaMask. And more recently, in the past 10 days, uh, we integrated Twitter uh, and then also direct to Hive signups. So we've done 363 total accounts uh, so far. And uh, I think this is pretty good. But the, the real you know, information comes with uh, finding out what these accounts are doing. Because you can create a bunch of accounts, but uh, who cares if nobody's actually operating them? So here's some data on the activity of these accounts. Uh, 212 of them are actually active uh, in one form or another. Um, and this gives us a 58% retention rate so far. Obviously, this is a super high retention rate. It's really good, um, but it's on a small number of accounts. Uh, basically, scaling this up, we'll see this retention rate drop, and that's very normal uh, relative to social platforms. Uh, but what we, what we want to see is, you know, a high number of uh, accounts being onboarded and as high of a number of active accounts as possible uh, being onboarded. So we don't want to just onboard a bunch of alt accounts. We want to do, you know, real accounts with real people. Uh, and you can see kind of the breakdown of activities here. Uh, I won't dive too deeply into that. <laughs> so here's another slide that I don't expect you um, to read. Uh, it is basically just the 2021 roadmap, you know, what we're planning on doing, uh, all of the various, you know, aspects of, of basically what's coming for Leo Finance. Uh, I've broken it down into basically six different major sections. Uh, we've got leofinance.io, obviously the longest section because it's our most important project. You know, it's the interface to our entire uh, community, to our entire project uh, as a whole. And then you've got Leo Infra. We already delivered on Leo Infra V2, which is the Twitter uh, signups and direct to Hive signups. Then you've got V3, which is coming soon, which is going to be Google, Facebook, uh, and a few other integrations that are important. Uh, Leo Fi, you've already seen some of that uh, DeFi stuff. This is basically just extending our reach uh, in the DeFi space. You know, adding things like a lending platform, uh, you know, collateralized loans, and then a Geyser UI uh, so that people can interact with. Uh, the geyser uh, and see the rewards and all of that. Then you got Leo Dex. I think a lot of people use Leo Dex to trade. Um, we're going to release version seven soon. Uh, we're also working on cross chain integration, so adding things like Ethereum uh, to that uh, interface. Uh, marketing, obviously, a major focus of ours. Uh, I've included, you know, some of the things that we're working on in terms of marketing, uh, and we do plan on launching a DHF proposal at some point, uh, which will basically help us fund ongoing marketing. Uh, but we really want to pr prove that we're, you know, delivering on our marketing. We don't want to just ask for funding and not deliver anything tangible. So uh, we're going to start marketing with our own funds and then basically use that data uh, to ask for a proposal that will scale it up. Uh, and then a governance layer, I won't dive too deeply into that. That's later in 2021. 
uh, basically just decreasing our reliance on Hive Engine and, and building better infrastructure uh, that's more decentralized and robust. So I don't know if I have much time for questions, but uh, this is basically where you can find Leo, where you can trade it, uh, how you can support it and all of that. Um, Roland can let me know if I, uh, if I left any time or not. Uh, okay, yeah, we have time for uh, one uh, question. So I'll, I'll activate the audience participation. And the first question uh, to come in, I will give the mic. And so, boom! Whoa, 200 questions. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Crypto Spa, you are was the fastest and you are on the air. Okay, thank you. So, uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very active on Leo Finance, and I think that it is one of the real success stories on high blockchain. So, thank you, Leo Finance. And my question is relating to the new feature that you have integrated recently. I mean, to bring people via MetaMask to Leo Finance and uh, via Twitter to bring people to Leo Finance as well. Just curious at the moment, uh, what is the share of these users? from the total let's say numbers of users uh on uh leo finance what is the share of this that came via twitter and via metamask um sorry are you so you're asking what share of the activity is yes uh, what is the number of this users uh if compared to the number of the pure hivers that used to be on high blockchain because i didn't see this in the slides uh, yeah, I mean, we've got some activity here, but um, that would be a good thing to uh, to run a report on is, is you know, how active are these accounts compared to, you know, hivers that already existed. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see generally their activity, you know, post votes, custom JSONs, uh, what they're doing on the chain. But I think it's, it's still pretty early on in terms of, you know, data on uh, activity long term. So obviously, Leo is only 60 days old. And then you know, it, it really started taking off more recently, uh, if you see this slide, uh, you know, when we integrated Twitter. So I think over the next couple of months, you'll see a lot more in-depth data on, you know, what these onboarded accounts are actually doing. And especially when we go to do the DHF proposal, um, you know, I'll, I'll definitely make it clear, you know, what these accounts are doing and if we're actually, you know, successful in delivering on, uh, you know, bringing a new generation of Hive users, which uh, is our entire goal. Right. Okay, great. There are a couple of more questions, but uh, unfortunately, we're running a little bit behind schedule. So thank you very much, um, Carl. Please uh, stick around and uh, hop uh, both rooms or maybe go. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Need some coffee. Yep. Awesome. Thank you.